So this is an observational cohort study where we followed over 2,000 deceased donor kidneys that were transplanted in recipients across the country. The question in this study that we were asking was how do the kidneys that had acute kidney injury at the time of organ removal from the donor fared in the recipients who received the kidney. To our surprise, we noticed that acute kidney injury was not associated with reduced graft function or graft survival in the recipients uh, who received this kidney. The, the belief in the community is that uh, acute kidney injury, uh, the kidneys with acute kidney injury may be of a slightly lower quality and may not last as long and thus the surgeons are hesitant to take and transplant them into the recipients. Moreover, we also noticed that the severity of acute kidney injury um, did not matter in terms of long-term graft survival. So the kidneys which had threefold or more than threefold um, change in serum creatinine, which is the marker used for measuring acute kidney injury, showed the same graft function at the end of four to five years of follow-up as we saw in patients who did not have um, kidneys that had acute kidney injury. Kidney transplantation is one of the most effective interventions in, um, in the field of medicine. It is cost effective and it improves the quality and the quantity of life in patients who have end-stage kidney disease and are on dialysis. Patients who are waiting for a kidney transplant have to wait for about three to five years before they receive the kidney. And in US, the number of living kidney transplantations, the kidneys that can you get from your loved one, is plateaued and we do only about six to seven thousand of them per year. So the pool of transplants that can increase are the kidneys that are coming from deceased donors, patients who have had accidents, trauma, or some sort of head injury and uh, donate their organs to other patients. So with this research, we demonstrate that kidneys that have acute kidney injury that are discarded at a much higher rate um, by the surgeons can be brought back into the pool for transplantation. If we do the rough math uh, based on the total discards that are happening uh, with these kidneys, we think that about 500 more kidneys can be brought back into the transplant pool and thus taking 500 patients off the waiting list for dialysis. And thus, uh, this would be a very valuable and a very easy way to increase the transplantation um, in, across the country. As I said, this research has a number of dimensions um, uh, that can be affected at the life of the patients, the providers, the regulators, and to the Medicare that supports the cost of kidney dialysis and transplantation. So if we start off at the level of Medicare, every year a patient stays on dialysis uh, as a country or as a cost of Medicare, we incur about $100,000 a year for a given patient. If the patient can get transplanted, they go back to have a better quality of life, a lot of them get gainfully employed, and thus um, having these kidneys back and available for transplantation is excellent. In terms of uh, hospitals and regulation, we need to understand that the clinical outcomes with these acute kidney injury kidneys are not worse. Transplant programs are under a lot of scrutiny by CMS, and thus the surgeons are risk averse in taking kidneys that could have a higher rate of graft failure because that could bring the transplant programs under scrutiny sometimes causing a shutdown. Reports like this which are large multi-center studies with adequate follow-up demonstrate that um, taking these kidneys um, is okay and thus um, the regulatory burden and the risk uh, would not be very high if uh, these kidneys are brought back into the transplant pool. Once again, for the providers, these are the 
evidence that is required so that the surgeons can do their surgery and the nephrologists can uh, consent the patients uh, into receiving these kidneys. For patients, uh, once again, there are over 100,000 patients who are on the waiting list to receive a transplant. A lot of the patients get frail while waiting for three to five years on dialysis. 20% of them uh, either die waiting for the kidney or become so frail that they are taken off from the waiting list. So if more people can get transplant, the more of these kidneys uh, can be used, less are discarded and everybody wins in this, um, uh, in the bargain. Currently, if you look at the kidney discard rate um, in deceased donors, we see that uh, a, a generally a kidney is discarded at about 15 to 18% rate and it could be for a number of reasons when the surgeon goes to harvest the kidney from a, a deceased donor. It could be a quality score, it could be some anatomical reason, but we have published that um, kidneys that have acute kidney injury are discarded at a much higher rate, at about 30%. So one in three kidneys are discarded after they were removed from the deceased donor um, if, if with the expectation that they would be transplanted in a given recipient. The kidneys with acute kidney injury also incur a lot of resource utilization. They undergo a lot of biopsies because the surgeons and the nephrologists are trying to understand the quality. They undergo pumping, uh, which is the duration, uh, pumping for about 8 to 12 hours. This is the duration between the kidney coming out from the donor and going into the transplant center into a recipient and the pumping is done with the expectation that the kidney quality will be maintained and the kidneys would remain viable. Despite all of these approaches, about third of the kidneys are still discarded. And thus, uh, this research uh, provides the confidence and the evidence that um, the kidneys with acute kidney injury, even with severe acute kidney injury, uh, does not have poor outcomes and should not be discarded. Um, we can retransplant about 500 kidneys that are currently being uh, discarded with acute kidney injury um, and provide the uh, evidence that um, uh, this uh, re valuable resource uh, should, be, should be given to the recipients on the waiting list. I think the next for this research is if we increase the utilization of kidneys that have acute kidney injury. And for this, few steps will need to happen. Uh, we are in discussion with uh, CMS to see that um, they can uh, undertake demonstration projects where the centers that would take the risk and transplant the kidneys with acute kidney injury would actually get a waiver in terms of not counting the outcomes against them. Once we show some of the centers participating in this demonstration project that the acute kidney injuries can be safely transplanted and the outcomes are good for um, uh, a year or a couple of years, we can expand this to all the centers across the country. We are also thinking in terms of other tools. Um, as part of the studies, we have collected biopsy and serum and urine samples. So we are looking for repair proteins, proteins that will inform the surgeon and the uh, patients that these kidneys will heal. And the uh, presence of these proteins would be an additional evidence that uh, these kidneys would be transplanted. We are also thinking in terms of other interventions that could be done in deceased donors to reduce the occurrence of AKI as part of the management that happens with deceased donors while um, they are in the hospital until the organ procurement agencies comes in to um, remove the organs and um, that part of the care is also crucially important to reduce the occurrence of acute kidney injury. So I think number of future directions um, will be undertaken but the most um, uh, important for the society is to see if we can um, prospectively demonstrate the same outcomes that we saw in our observational study.